G'day guys, welcome back to the Body Meets Mind podcast, philosophies and strategies for an elevated life. As usual, I'm with my lovely friend and co-host, Mr. Paul Gleaser. Paulie, how are you, sir? I'm very, very well, Tom. Very excited for the topic that is on the agenda today. Well, mate, this is one of the things I think, uh, this is one of the topics where you and I kind of connected with uh, very early on in our friendship, it just seemed like we had a common interest in spirituality. Um, I remember, I actually remember where we were standing in the gym where you talk, where you were talking to me about your five year long journey to, you know, help recover from your, from your tick and, and, and kind of all the different healing modalities you went through, um, to, to work with that. But even before that, um, we started talking about mental health and it just inevitably, went down the road of spirituality but for everyone listening and, and watching for context today's show is all is going to be all about um how our uh, experiences being raised um in a religion um and then moving to more kind of secular spirituality i don't want to talk on your behalf paulie but is that how you would define kind of where you're at with your faith and your spirituality and yeah, uh, definitely. I think all, all will be uncovered um, when we kind of delve a little bit deeper into our own experiences. But yeah, 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 cool. So so that's kind of where we're at now. And we thought we'd just talk about it. We've come from two different faiths. We've both been very interested in religion and faiths and all different sorts of religions as well. Paulie having traveled, myself having read, um, you know, some of the books um, and uh, and we'll kind of see where it takes us. But I think, you know, just to, to kind of kick things off here, um, one of the really interesting stats that have come from the contemporary world is that religion is on a pretty, you know, severe downward spiral in terms of people being religious and, and, and identifying themselves with a religion. But spirit, spirituality is on the up. So as we remove ourselves from, you know, this kind of theologian-esque um, idea, this supernatural idea of God or whatever it is, it's almost become a kind of more personal relationship with with god or the universe or something greater than oneself however people define it um do you have any insights before we get into our personal stories on on why that might be paulie and, and what you see in the spirituality landscape i i personally believe that um because of the uncovering and, uh, you know, the openness of information that is is out there nowadays and the ability for people to, to be able to access that information, there's been a significant shift in the way the world communicates and the world, the way the world actually, um, you know, receives information, including individuals. I believe once upon a time, uh, and this is not dissing religion, nor religion or institutions behind religion, but... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but like I, I feel there was a lot of fear based yeah. around um, yeah. religion, and that was where people kind of held it, hung their hat. That's where faith, kind of, you know, and protection um, w was played a big part in people's lives, mm -hmm. and it was quite easy to be able to uh, deliver that type of information um, with a lack of. Um, you know, new sources or information sources there. But now people are able to uh, delve pretty deeply into their own um, their, their, their own perspective of what um, spirituality looks like to them. And I think it's such a powerful um, thing and faith in itself, you know, like I find faith to be such an incredibly powerful thing and faith in religion, um, you know, you see so many successful people who are, heavily heavily religious because of that unwavering faith this belief that there is something greater than them mm -hmm. that has their back mm -hmm. um which is which is a really really powerful thing and it's it, it's almost irrelevant whether it's right or wrong you know yes yeah exactly right this is one of the things yeah. that uh <clears throat> i think is really wonderful and also terrifying about spirituality is because there is no set truth you know and no you know no particular right or wrong objective right or wrong yeah that's kind of existentially destabilizing for people because they're kind of like well if it's not right or wrong then should i pursue it like i feel like certainty gives people a sense of stability you know mm. two plus two does equal four. Oh, okay good you know people <laughs> that logic can be really um um comfortable in that way but spirituality mm. it's this kind of uh you know perennial 
intangible force that we really don't really understand. And it's about a connection with self and a connection to something greater than oneself. And um, that dynamic um, is is wonderful because it is dynamic, um, mm. but it's it can be a bit uncomfortable, you know, and practically speaking, it's how to find your place in the world, you know, that that can take time. Uh, it certainly can. And, you know, you said spirituality is very much on the rise. Um, but so is, is science and yeah. um, the the hard belief that people have in science over religion, um, so so to speak, as well. And we've been really, really drawn um, over uh, over the years to if modern science can prove it, then I'll believe it. Yeah. Um, and and it's I've always found that to be a little bit bizarre because. We are constantly disproving previous scientific, you know, understandings and revelations. So why, if we were to apply that logic, why would our current understanding of what science is hold weight a hundred years from now? Mm, mm, exactly right. Exactly. And, and that, that's where, I mean, faith is, you know, this idea of um, believing without seeing, you know, but we kind of have faith all the time. You know, I, I, I have faith when I drive a car, you know, like I don't know for certain that I'm not going to die in a car crash, but I have faith that I'll get there, you know, um, to point from to, to point B. Um, I can rely on history of driving and so forth. But, you know, there are so many things that we don't understand. Um, yeah. Science is very wonderful because it, it can measure things and it can prove things to, to the best of its ability um, and remove the bias, um, you know, with double blind controlled studies and so forth. But um, you're exactly right. You know, it's constantly disproving itself. Um, so, so to say simply that, you know, well, if it's not scientific, then then it's not real. It's like that might be true, but there's that old there's that old expression. Now, I'm, I'm probably going to butcher this. Um, something, something, something <laughs> is not something, something, something. Science, like, oh, lack of evidence is not evidence of lack or whatever it is. I'm gonna. Do you yeah, know that one? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it sounds uh, very familiar. Yes. I mean, we can we can look it up. If we had someone full time like Joe That's Rogan true. does, I'd be like, "Hey, buddy, can you just yeah. uh, look this up?" Hey, uh, Johnny, <laughs> can you? Uh... <laughs> That's right. But um, actually, what? we have Joe Rogan as our personal assistant full time. We do, we do. We 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 paid him uh, two billion dollars, um, and uh, for one episode, <laughs> and, uh, a, a, a wise investment. I it was wise, uh, and sadly, he declined. But he took the money. So, <laughs> oh dear. Well, um, why don't we start about um, keep things off a bit with uh, with your journey? So you came from the Jewish tradition. Yes, yeah, I'm uh, born and bred a uh, Jewish boy uh, from the heart of Caulfield, the ghetto, as they call it, <laughs> in, uh, in the uh, in the Melbourne part of the world. Yes. And I uh, went to a Jewish day school uh, my entire life. I went from one Jewish day school to another, and um, yeah, it was it was a really lovely um, educational experience. Um, there was a sense of kind of unity and um, community. And that's what really drew me to to, to the, um, I suppose, the Jewish religion, more mm. so than the, the spiritual side of things. Yep. Um, but uh, I, I've definitely opened up and I've seen a, a lot more of, you know, what Judaism has to offer in terms of spirituality. Mm. Um, but my my journey kind of naturally evolved as I became an adult. I mean, w w one other thing, and this is kind of a separate discussion to uh, um, religion and spirituality, but it was quite a sheltered upbringing as well because you were basically existing with, you were surrounded by Jews, uh, yeah. and, and that's pretty much it in your upbringing. But this is a we, this is a completely separate uh, discussion topic. But stepping mm. out into the real world, I started to become a little bit more curious about. Uh, other religions, um, I've, I've, you know, really, really delved um, uh, deeply into um, Buddhism and Hinduism and um, other, um, you, you know, Eastern uh, religions, which I've, I've become a little bit more, um, you know, interested in over the years. Yep. And um, I, I like to think any exploration that an individual does go down, we have the freedom mm -hmm. and the ability, which we did not necessarily have even 200 years ago to be able to say right like i'm just going to kind of live my own life 
according to the learnings and what resonates with me. Mm. You'd be burnt at the stake for doing that, yes. you know, like yes. uh, uh, a short while ago. So yeah. that's that's my own experience, and it's kind of brought me to where I am today. And uh, and 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 I really part of my my current religion is science as well because yeah, I respect science. Um, even though I said what I said previously, I still respect it. It gives me something tangible to be able to kind of continue along with. But mm -hmm. um, let's hear about your own experience, Tommy. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I uh, raised a Catholic, um, not re relatively casually. I mean, we there was a I probably kind of zero to ten. We were at church every Sunday, um, uh, and then after that, uh, you know, my sister and I, you know, began to really plead with mum and dad that you know we really weren't not not for any particular reason. We just kind of found it boring. If I'm being totally honest with you, and then it became yeah. a, more of a casual thing. And you might just go at Christmas time, or whatever. But I was baptized and and, and confirmed and so forth. Um, uh, you know, but one of the reasons I really broke out of Catholicism is because I developed um, OCD. Um, uh, I mean, I that's something that I managed, but I but I developed a specific aspect of OCD in which I was terrified about this this christian notions of, of of burning eternally in hell if i if i was um, mm -hmm. a bad person you know the catholic guilt as they say um and uh i uh began to pick up rubbish you know as we've spoken about on a previous episode and uh it became so constricting that when i started to, um, to seek therapy one of the one of my psychologists spoke to me about um meditation so I gave it a go. I wasn't very good at it. Um, but one of the apps that I was using was a, was a Buddhist style of, of um, it was a Buddhist app. It was grounded in Buddhism. Um, and then I became really interested in this idea of that Buddhism wasn't necessarily a religion, but just a practice, you know, and what I love so much about Buddhism is that it's based off this dude's um, own experience. You know, here's the Buddha whose his real name was Siddhartha Gautama. Um, he had a very sheltered upbringing, very, very rich, you know, and there was no, no adventure, you know, had all the, the all the, the, the women that he wanted, all the riches. Um, when he was 16, he was like, this is weird, you know, so he starts to go out of the castle and he sees terrible things. He sees a dying man and a sick man and, you know, and he runs back into the castle, but he's still so intrigued. He goes mm -hmm. out even further. He spends six years as an ascetic, you know, self-mutilation to find God. And then he realizes that too much pleasure and too much self-mortification aren't the right way. So he sits under a tree and meditates for 40 days and then he becomes enlightened mm -hmm. and he, and he comes back to the world. He, he contemplates it for a lot, comes back to the world and he says, look, this is what's going on team. These are the four truths that I've come to figure out. He goes, the reason that we're all in pain is because we suffer. The root of the suffering is attachment. Less attachment equals less suffering. Let me show you the way. And the way is the eightfold path, the middle way. And I just loved that. It was just so practical. I'm like, this, this guy went out and figured it out for himself. He mm -hmm. wasn't standing in a road at the top of an altar saying, if you do this, then this will happen. And he's like, I'm going to find out what that truth is for me. Mm -hmm. And I loved that. And then that got me very interested, likewise with you, into some of the more personal um, forms of spirituality. Hinduism is absolutely ripe with it. You know, the Bhagavad Gita was one of the most important books I ever read. Um, mm -hmm. But branching out from this idea of what I'm being told might not necessarily be what works for me. And I'm going to grab a bit of this. I'm going to grab a bit of that. And then I'm going to mesh it all together and make this awful pavlova, but at least it'll be my pavlova. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's beautifully said. And uh, I feel like we have the freedom to be able to do that now. We have the mm -hmm. freedom to be able to seek um, uh, and we have the freedom to be able to uh, enter this world without dogma. Yes. Uh, we, we can... We can explore, we can search, and we can really just kind of create our own Frankenstein's monster in the most beautiful way possible, you know? Yes. Like, yes. Uh, you know, become w what it is that resonates with you. And uh, that's th that's the beauty of what can kind of create change within an individual's life. And mm. um, I, I actually had the pleasure of um, uh, meditating under the current generation of the Bodhi tree that no was way uh, wow yeah yeah yeah. We, we, which was it was a hell of an experience mm. you know like there were um oh, wow there were like 
hundreds of monks around and they are separated into different um, sections. You have mm. Sri Lankan Buddhist monks um, in their section, you have Indian Buddhist monks, you have Chinese, and they're all broken up into different um, sections and, you know, mm. th their, um, their dress and their garb are slightly different uh, colours as well, different shades of orange. Mm. Um, it was very cool, very mm. cool. Well, just, just going back to your upbringing with Judaism, um, Judaism, excuse me, did you find, you know, one of the things I've really grown to love about um, the Jewish culture, I worked at a, um, um, it wasn't a Jewish gym, but it was right in the heart of Caulfield um, <laughs> and, and virtually everyone was Jewish there. So I, I, I was very interested and I learned a lot about, um, or some, some about um, Judaism. What I really loved about, there's a real sense of togetherness, you know, and it's striking because, Judaism is one of the smallest religions population wise, something like 14.3 million Jews or something in the whole world. Mm, you know, mm, I'm, mm. I'm sure there's more than a billion Muslims. There's definitely more than 500 million Christians, you know, mm. so it's a small religion by comparison, but do you feel, and um, if you could speak on your upbringing to this, um, that the communion community aspect of Judaism, um, is is some way related to the suffering that's been caused um you know I mean, not not just in the holocaust but it's time and time again the jewish people have had to suffer does that some way relate to it do you think i i think it definitely does i mean there's a significant uh element of uh survival uh that that, that was stamped into our my parents who were the children of holocaust survivors mm. but i think it goes further back than that because oh, yeah. the oppression that, that has existed amongst uh mm. many um you, you know rel religions but in particular like just talking about the jewish religion mm. for this point it has been quite um it's been quite generational and i think yeah. that 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 form of community has come as a sense of um uh, requirement um, even even more so than uh, choice. And now when you step into my generation, obviously we're not, uh, you, you know, like we're not looking at, you know, being um, uh, forced to do uh, change religion or to uh, be exterminated, this, that mm -hmm. and the other. But um, the sense of community um, is something that a lot of us are incredibly um proud of mm. and you feel like you have brothers amongst yeah. many many um you know families that uh coexist in uh in your area and you know mm. like like anything the, the very same thing that i love about that is the very same thing that repels me about it at times sure as well. sure because, yeah because there's you know sometimes you just want to kind of be anonymous and yeah uh, you know kind of just chill out, but yep. um, it can be quite an intensive experience as well. And I know I've got many friends that have fled the southern suburbs and gone as far north as they possibly can, mm. even so far north that they go to Byron Bay, Moan Bimbi, and, uh, <laughs> um, you know, the um, the Gold Coast. Uh, wow. So, yeah, it's, uh, but it was, a, it, it's been an incredible experience, but also like being part of, the family upbringing as well, you know, uh, cousins, um, uh, parents, grandparents. It's very much a, a family-oriented way of life. Mm, mm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, th there's one thing to be kind of religiously Jewish and another um, to be kind of culturally Jewish as well. Is that – could you elaborate on that? Well, there's um, – you know, I have a lot of, um, I know a lot of religious Jews and there are different sects of religion, uh, of different sects of Judaism. There's, uh, you know, there's um, various different types and they can, um, you know, they can be um, incredibly um, religious yes. and they, they can span all the way to being secular. And I, I would say that I recognise myself in more the secular kind of, I identify culturally as a Jew, but I probably don't express myself, you know, uh, religiously that much as a Jew. But I love Shabbat dinner every Friday night. 
it would be a very, very scarcely that I would miss that. And it's not because of the religious component. It's because it's a set time where I get to be around my family and yeah. I get to be able to say, right, this is a, a moment for us all to um, just enjoy each other's company, break some bread and uh, have a good time. Mm, mm. Well, you know, one, one of the things that I know you and I are both um, very interested in is, you know, our personal spirituality being a dynamic force that changes, you know, and grows. And, um, and it'll be interesting to see kind of, uh, you know, what our spirituality look, spirituality looks like in five, 10 years with a few more books having been read, podcasts having been recorded um, and uh, and experiences that have shaped our lives. So, Paul, mate, always a pleasure. Um, and uh, any, any last words? No, <laughs> no, no last <laughs> words. Um, no, that was a, it was a good one. It was fun to be able to explore that side of things. And, um, you know, we're actually looking at, uh, we haven't confirmed anyone, but we were speaking just before this, we're looking at getting uh, various uh, different representation of different religions on the yeah. show and maybe giving them a little bit of a, a questionnaire on, you know, what, what spirituality and religion means to them and how they find their path in, mm. um, in their own religion and spirituality, which I think would be really cool to be able to explore. Definitely, definitely. Well, guys, uh, as, always, as always, we we love the fact that you're tuning in. And um, as Paulie's spoken to a lot in the past, we want this to be a, a two-way thing, a, a community. So reach out to us, let us know, um, um, you know, what your feedback is, what you like, what you didn't like. Um, if you have any guests that you think would be good for the show, let us know. Um, we're, we're excited to be to be molding this with you as well. So um, it's such a wonderful journey and a privilege. And um, we're pumped that you're listening. But uh, until next time, bye for now. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, guys. <laughs>